So, on the bench today is a Cobra 148 GTL. And this one has, uh, the issue with this one is it has uh, no transmit. Uh, I don't know if it's just um, on AM or sideband or both or whatever, um, but something we'll find out. So this video here is... It's not necessarily a how-to video, um, but you guys want to see how I how I work. Well, this is this video is about that. It's not going to be a step-by-step -step process on diagnosing anything or whatever. I just you know it's uh, not to be rude, but I just don't have the time to uh, sit here and teach um, CB repair. But what I can do is just set up a camera, and you guys can watch. Uh, basically from start to finish how I diagnose and then hopefully fix uh, a radio so this uh, belongs this one's in actually really nice shape um, belongs to a uh, what's become a good customer of mine in uh, great state of New York and uh, so he's been sending me a lot of radios and this is uh, one of them in fact he's got a bunch of uh cobra 148 gtls so this one here is relatively on the newer side um yeah like i said it's in really nice shape um not a dent or a ding on it yeah nice and clean um but it does have the uh, no transmit problem so I haven't opened this up yet. I haven't even tested it to see anything. So um, what you see is uh, exactly what I see at the same time. Uh, so uh, without further ado, um, let me see uh, exactly what's going on. So let me get this plugged in. I'll get a mic. Hopefully the view is okay. Um, it's kind of small up here. I wouldn't say I have a lot of room. So... Uh, setting up a camera can be kind of difficult sometimes, but at least you guys get to see uh, you guys get to see what uh, what's going on here at my level. So, first order, let's see if what he's saying is true. Well, of course it's going to be true, but obviously, um, let's just make sure. All right. So the thing with these is, oh, I already got it hooked up on a signal generator. Oh, well, it does receive. <laughs> well, that's a good thing. Um, I'm going to get this hooked up here to the watt meter. I got a DC block on there anyway, so it's all right, but you definitely don't want to be keying up. All right, so what I was trying to say before is, um, these have AM regulators, so if it's not, if it's transmitting on sideband and it's not trans, uh, and it's not transmitting on AM, it could be a bad regulator. But if it's not transmitting at all, then it's it's something else. These, um, as you work on radios, you kind of become familiar with, um, I guess, the faults. Or the quirks with the radio and um, AM regulators are known to go on these but um, these are a lot of radios actually but let's see let's make sure everything is right off CB or AM RF gain doesn't really matter dynamite all the way up voice locks in the middle all right AM okay so the light is coming on But no carrier, and that's on AM. Test, test, test. Yeah, nothing. Okay. But the light is coming on, so that's that's good. All right, let's try sideband. Test, 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 test. Well, again, the light's coming on, but nothing's coming up on the meter. So it's not an AM regulator. So the next thing to do would have been to do receive, but we already did that, and it is receiving. Because the reason why you want to know if it's receiving or not is because you can, if you lose both receive and transmit, um, you know, you can go down a different road of diagnosing. But 
Um, we already know this transmits, I mean, uh, receives. It's an S9. Yeah, it's about right. So receive is perfect. So there's no transmit. Okay, so let's get this back on the on the watt meter and the dummy load. What's going on here? Okay. Because if it wasn't transmitting or receiving, um, you know, something major is going on. Maybe. VCO or PLL or maybe uh, like the the 10.240 crystal something's not oscillating something like that but um, seeing as it's receiving and uh, not transmitting we can kind of narrow down like I don't have to go and checking go and check the uh, to make sure that the crystal's working because it is because if we had no no transmit and no receive. I mean, if we have receive, uh, then it means that crystal is working. It's oscillating uh, in this particular radio. So there's no reason to go testing that. So we can just go right for the transmit chain and see what's going on with that. It's a really nice radio. Really nice shape. I think the next thing to do would be to search for something obvious. Um, like a burnt component of some sort. Maybe a trans uh, transistor uh, that's burnt up. Uh, something. Um, maybe a burnt trace or... So the next step is to visually uh, inspect the radio. This is what I do. So there's more, as they say, there's more than one way to skin a cat. So there is, um, I wouldn't say that there's a right and wrong way. You can, like, you know, you can start checking voltages. You can, you can do um, a few different ways. Uh, this is how I do it. Um, all right, first order is to disconnect the speaker. That's annoying. All right. Set this aside. Take this off. Put this over here. These are nice covers. You don't want them to get them, get them scratched up. All right. So it doesn't look first glance it doesn't look like anything is um, hacked up uh, so the clarifier is unlocked and I think that's it So, what do we have for a driver in the final? What is that? That is a 2078 driver, and that's driving a 1969, but it looks like it's a Ranger made. 1969 yeah I think that's a Ranger uh, 1969 it's not a Mitsubishi um, yeah because some of these are Ranger made anyway but um, yeah that's a Ranger made 1969 so you have a 2078 driving a 1969 another fault on a lot of these not just this radio any radio where the bias uh, is adjustable sometimes you'll find these things cranked all the way and um, you know you, you might get a little bit of life out of them but they won't last too long that way uh, both driver and final so that that's another another issue with somebody that just you know tinkers inside of these without doing anything but 
Let me uh, let me see if there's if I can see anything like a hole or something in that driver or final. What that? Yeah, no. I mean, visually, that looks okay. Yeah, these have never been touched. There's still the uh, the locker on it. Nothing looks. At first glance, nothing looks burnt up or uh, exploded. I don't see anything anyway. A little bit of glue on the PLL, but that's it's very minimal. Uh, yeah, you got some bad solder joints, but that's that's common with these of this vintage, the later ones, Ranger made ones. I don't see anything that just pops right out and screams um, faulty. It has been worked on here. I think that's clarifier, clarifier mod. Yes, definitely. R44 is lifted. That's for the clarifier. Okay. Well, they definitely burnt up some of the traces there. That's kind of crappy. But everything looks okay. PLO area looks untouched. Alright, well, everything looks okay. So now... I think what I'm going to do next is just, um, first of all, let me take off that. Let's see, Did anybody mess with this driver and final bias? Let me see. No, so no one's touched. No one's touched the, uh, the adjustment for the driver on the final uh, the bias because there's still the uh the locking um let me shut this off there's still that locking uh thread locker or whatever you want to call it on the uh on the pot on the pots you know that that stuff so that's a good thing though. Um, I think next I'm going to um, I'm going to start at the final with my uh, oscilloscope and start probing for RF and uh, work my way backwards. So let me get the schematic. I mean, uh, service manual here up on my laptop. So, the transmit chain, it would be 45, L45, 46, 47, 48, L38, okay. So, another possibility, I mean, it could be anything, but, you know, it could be a burnt up resistor, it could be anything, uh, a bad cap, um, you could even have a bad can, so, um, the thing to do would be to work backwards. You can check voltages if you want. Like again, there's, there's a few different ways of doing this. So just because I'm doing it this way doesn't make it wrong or right. It's just how I do it. Um, so I'm gonna stop probing. Back here, on the dummy load, yeah. Okay. That's on.
frequency counter on. Yeah, this this clarifier is way off. So when I center it, we're on channel 19. We got 27.1834. Yeah, that's that's way off. Well, it's not centered. But when you unlock the clarifier, you gotta make sure that I mean I know it doesn't bother some people, but it would bother me that it's not centered. It is making it back there. Okay. So it's just not amplifying. it's making it to the driver Yeah, we should have way more. Way, way more than what's coming up on the scope. All right. So let's, let's go down the chain. So what's the, maybe we got a bad can or something. L. Five, forty six, forty seven, forty eight. Okay, forty seven with forty five. Forty five is right here.
Okay. Okay. Well, it's making it out. Starting to I think I'm losing it at the driver RF because it just kind of seems to disappear. do is uh, I'm gonna pull up I'm gonna pull up a, uh, the legs on the uh, on the driver I'm not even gonna bother getting out my desoldering gun and uh, I'm gonna test this uh, test the driver This is off, right? Yep, it's off. Okay. I I work backwards. Um, I work when I have no transmit. I work backwards because it's again, it's a very common thing on all these radios, no matter what radio you're working on, to have a blown driver or final. You know, people do messed up things. Um, especially people that don't know, you buy something off of eBay and, you know, the person that doesn't know has been keying up without an antenna uh, or a dummy load and next thing you know is the driver is blown, final is blown. I'm going to go ahead and just do them both. <clears throat> okay. I don't know. People say these don't work. Those, they work fine for me. I wouldn't want to recap the whole radio with this thing, but uh, it does work. These suckers. <laughs> All right. I don't want to remove the whole thing just in case. Um, just in case they're fine. can just put them right back but at this point based on what I'm seeing on the scope um, this driver is a uh, suspect all right Alright, so I don't know if you can see that it's testing as two diodes. That's a sure sign that the transistor is bad. So what I like to do is sometimes uh, just switch these uh, the tester leads 
just to double check. Well, I thought we'd have more to, uh, I mean, well, it could be more, but I thought there'd be more diagnosing than this, but let's see. Yeah, two diodes again. All right, so that's definitely bad. That's definitely bad. That should come up as a transistor, not two diodes, obviously. All right, let's see. Let's see the final. fine you see how it comes up as a NPN transistor all right so okay switch it up and just to confirm yeah all right so looks like we have a bad driver Well, the good thing is I have plenty of 2078 uh, transistors. And uh, I do have 1969 finals, but um, this one's testing fine. Another thing you got to make sure is the uh, whether it's a mica or plastic uh, insulator or ceramic insulator that that's good as well um, because that too will uh, wow that that's really dry because that too will uh, cause a transistor to go bad. Is there an insulator on this? Okay, there is. dry side so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pull out that uh, I'm gonna pull out that final too and put some uh, thermal paste behind that and then hopefully we have our transmit back and then we can just go ahead and uh, check our biases and uh, that's really about it If I have one that's long enough. Okay. Could also use a uh, an NTE two thirty six. Um, these would be the uh, no, they wouldn't. These are the replacements for. Um, well, yeah, you could use them uh, for that. 
yeah, or a 13, uh, 1306. You could use, I got a bunch of 1306s, but uh, yeah, you can use a 235 as a drive, 236 as a driver, you could, uh, 235 as a driver. Um, the 236, NTE 236, I believe, are, uh, they might even replace the 1969s. I forget. Uh, I'd have to look at the uh, the data sheets. But um, anyway, there's a. I got a replacement. Uh, one that belongs in there, 2078. Inspect the insulator. This one looks all right. so I don't get confused. You have to put everything back in the way it was. You have to put, you can use a nylon screw if you want, um, but if you're going to be using a metal nut and a metal screw, you have to use the insulator. It's super important. If not, you have problems. Why is it so tight around there? I don't know. comes the lock washer so you put everything back the way you took it out Leave it a little, snug it up, but don't tighten it all the way. Because you want to make sure that it's centered and you want to bend the legs down.
Flux. Normally have a fan on, but I don't today. Just make sure that none of the legs are bridged together and they are not here. All right, so now let me take this final out and uh. Put some of the uh, thermal paste behind that because it's the driver was pretty dry. So let me. Uh, I'm assuming the final is going to be dry as well. So while we're here, might as well do it. Be careful when you're taking these out, especially if you're going to be reusing them, because they're they're pretty fragile. Hopefully everything is in camera view. Sorry if it's not. I'm trying. I'm no Steven Spielberg here. Yeah, it's got an R on it, which an R on it, which uh, usually a Ranger will rebrand their uh, components and put their own uh, numbers on them or letters. Let me clean that up. Yeah, there's like no no thermal paste here. That could be a reason why. Um, that driver went because this one had just a little bit more than the other one but uh, still not enough alright this is messy there's really no no good way of doing this. I can't really teach you any tricks on how not to get dirty, but um, it is what it is. Again, everything's back in order. Insulator. This uh, bushing. fit a little bit better. Lock washer. And a nut.
flux. I use Kesta. This is uh, Kesta flux and Kesta um, um, solder. This is uh, 6337, 2.2%. It's my favorite one to use. good everything looks good all right well see if it transmits fingers crossed TX again. Audio. 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 Alright. I don't know if you guys can see the uh probably not. It's gonna be a little bit far, but see the meter right there. Audio. Audio. We got transmission. We got TX again. Alright. Uh, I guess that's, uh, that's kind of it. Um, let's get these tightened up a little bit more. That's it. Try uh actually let's try side down. Audio. Say um lower side band. Audio. Upper side band. Audio. Oh yeah. Alright. Well actually, let me uh let me check uh, let me check the bias all right so let's put mic gain dynamic whatever you want to call it all the way down we want this on upper side band and uh, this 
for the driver. Put that back. Put that to milliamps. Just to make sure, that's all. Well, this is where it. Wait, that's 300. I can't be right. Three hundred milliamps. Oh my god. And nobody nobody touched that. So it's not like not like am I, let me just double check here I thought it was 25 <sighs> bear with me I'm gonna log in again okay hold on driver driver bias 25 milliamps and 15 milliamp, uh, 50 milliamps for the final TP8. Wow, that is crazy. All right, see that? That's probably why. That's probably why the driver um, died. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, not to say that it couldn't take that amount of amperage, but it's, you know, they're not going to last long when you're driving them that hard. Uh, they're just not. So something that's supposed to be driven uh, with the 25, uh, with 25 amps is being driven with nearly 300 amps, milliamps, I'm, I'm sorry, milliamps. Um, Jesus. Is that even in focus? Are you guys seeing that? Yeah, hopefully you guys saw that. All right. That would definitely explain. Close enough. It's better than 300 and something. Milli. <laughs> milliamps. Let me just double check here. Yeah, 25, 26. That's, that's fine. Even, I, I'd even say even up to like 30 is fine. Uh, but not 300. All right, driver. What do you guys think? <laughs> okay, we want 50. It's actually it's actually underdriven on this side here. Well, that would explain why the driver went in the final didn't go. All right, so let's let's put this to fifty.
50. Jeez. Very sensitive. 58, 50. All right, 51.9. Perfect. All right. I hit this little thing here by mistake, but that's fine. All right. Put that back in. All righty. Well, that's about it. So that's how... That was a pretty, I wouldn't say easy fix, but um, a pretty normal fix. This is what you typically find with the no transmit. Uh, but obviously, uh, we had a problem with the driver bias, and that's why that driver, um, you know, went bye bye. So uh, I guess that's it, guys. So I'll see what. Uh, because this does have a very low uh, carrier, like a one and a half watt carrier. But I know he uh, drives a lot of amps, and he uh, will sometimes want the carrier that low. So I'll double check with him uh, and see if um, see if he wants the carrier that low, uh, or if he wants me to go ahead and align this. Um, but that's that's something else. Uh, that, you know, doesn't really need to be uh, recorded because uh, that's pretty basic. But anyway, that's um, that's it. That's a wrap for this uh, Cobra 148 GTL with uh, no transmit. Uh, that's how you uh, go about fixing this one anyway. All right, guys. Thanks for watching.